Is she fired? Is she the MAGA? We got some questions for y'all today, baby. What's up, Sky Squad? We are back in the building, baby. Back in the building. Back in the DM to the V. Okay? Sky Squad, where you at? Where my people watching from? Let me know in that good chatterization. You know what I'm saying? Let a brother know where you're watching from. You know, and if you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you like reality TV commentary and a little bit of news and a little bit of reality recaps going on here. Um, let a brother know, you know, by subscribing, hit that notification bell button or just text me at 202-918-3386 so I can have your information so I can let you know as soon as a new video drops or when I'm doing something off of this platform because you never know, okay? So go ahead and, you know, get that message going. Now, I see some people up in here. Hey, Louisville, how you doing? I see we got Trinidad in the building, Vancouver, Chi-Town in the place to be. I see you. I see you, South Carolina, Brooklyn, Tennessee. Um, Who else we got up in here? California, I see you. Duncanville, Texas, Belize, baby, Belize. San Diego, Detroit at work. Halifax, Canada, Miami, Florida. Hey, I miss Miami already, y'all. Miss Miami. But I, I I don't miss not being able to go live. I like to go live. So I wasn't able to do that in the hotel. London, UK. Who else? Hey, home of the Super Bowl chips. All right. Y'all, we got to talk about a couple of things today. Um, we're first talking about what's going on with Lisa Renner exposing Kathy Hilton. Some interesting stuff going on here. I'm going to save that. Um, we got some rumors that Candace Dillard Bassett had been let, has been let go of the Real Housewives of it, uh, Potomac. So we're going to talk about that. And again, I state rumors again. Let me put the, let me put the disclaimer up here, the disclaimer, y'all. Allegedly, okay, speculation based on some information that went out. And Candace has responded after this information has gone out. We're also going to talk about Ladies Who List, Episode 6, Giddy On Up, okay? And we got to get into some things. Now, for those of you guys who may have noticed or heard me talk about it, we had an interview scheduled with Crystal from Ladies Who List, and that will be actually next Tuesday, y'all. It will be next Tuesday at 1.30 p.m. because... Uh, we had to just do some couple of changes, and it actually works better for both of our schedules to do it next Tuesday. So, y'all, come on back next Tuesday. You know, join us live as me and Crystal get into some things that I got to ask her about, okay? I'm, I got to ask her about some things, all right? Now, let's go ahead and get into conversation about uh, what's going on with, with down to the to the Beverly Hills. Actually, before we get into that, can we just celebrate this moment real quick right here? Auntie Garcelle, okay, Mama Garcelle then, and then got herself a first look deal with NBC Universal. Now, for those of you guys who don't know, Bravo is under the NBC Universal umbrella. And so um, her getting her, you know, she has a production company. So her getting a first look deal means that they will have the first right of refusal for any Pro, any um, um content that her production company puts forward that is major garcelle has parlayed her time on the real housewives of beverly hills into a hosting stint on the real as well as this deal with nbc universal and to be quite honest with you guys i have got to we I, you know we talk about we'll talk about the tea we talk about reality recaps and we'll talk about some news that's sometimes controversial but on this channel, we're going to always celebrate the wins as well because that's equally as important. And I wanted to highlight this right now because when we see, honestly, excellence, you know, <laughs> okay, okay. When we see excellence in, in this space, we're going to make sure that we that we talk it up. You know what I'm saying? We're going, to, we're going to make sure that we mention it because it needs to be seen by as many people as possible and it needs to be celebrated. So, boom. How's that for relevancy, Miss Door Reads? But let's move on to Kathy, okay? Mm -hmm. What's going on with Kathy, y'all ask? What's going on with Kathy? What's going on with Kathy? What's going on with Kathy? Well, y'all know I, we had talked to you guys last week about her uh, not being at that good old season finale party down to the Real Housewives of the Beverly Hills. But now 
We know why. Okay. Because Lisa Renner posted it. Baby, Lisa Renner is back. Okay. In some way, shape, or form. She, the woman, the girl, the lady is back. Now, we know she ain't holding Erica Jane to no fires, but Kathy Hilton will do. Now, I got to tell y'all the truth. I'm just going to be honest with y'all. Last season, the people online ranting and raving about Kathy. And granted, Kathy was funny, you know, but there were some circles that were wondering, well, is the lady faking it? Because I don't know if I believe the act or whatever. Me, she provided the, a good level of comic relief for the show. I, I can understand why they want her back. She's a huge name in a lot of industries, right? So I knew, I said, just as sure, just as sure as all of these people are celebrating Kathy online, I know how the tide will turn. And something told me. Something in my spirit said, I know they're going to do to Kathy exactly what they do to everybody else. Okay. And uh, so I'm just kind of waiting to see what's really going on. Cause you know, there have been, there have been rumors that there was a Kathy Hilton meltdown down into the Aspen where all the rest of the chaos was going on for the cash trips. And so then there was rumors that she had been refusing to film since she had came back and she was not on good terms with that good Erica Jane. So, uh, or Lisa Renner. Now, Lisa Renner had been doing some, you know, uh, post and deletes about cease and desist. And these were allegedly thought to be from Kathy Hilton to somebody on the cast or to some news outlets because they had been reporting on this alleged meltdown. OK, and so now you have Lisa Renner back at it again, back at it like it's the first time. And she says, oh, this is where Kathy Hilton was, okay? So alleged, according to the reports here, she says, the reports say Kathy Hilton, the mother of Paris Hilton, was at Trump's Super Bowl party, and that's why she couldn't make it down to the finale because she had to be down to the West Palm Beach, Florida. Where That's where it seemed like all the people go when they want to go hang out with the Trump people and stuff like that. So let me let me give you guys a little bit more detail about what's going on, okay? just because I feel like there's a lot of information going around about this situation because apparently according to um, the sources, y'all know who the, the sources be. Okay. They had told uh, radar online was told that Bravo had already knew that Kathy was not going to be in attendance at that party. She did not refuse to film. Um, they said our friend Vera lost her husband a year ago last week. Vera lives in Palm beach and Kathy and Rick had always planned on being in Palm Beach this weekend with her for the week. OK, she's also hosting a charity event with her daughter. So that was all planned well in advance and production allegedly already knew. Well, let me tell you something. I, I bet you who didn't know was Lisa Renner. OK, and, and probably that good Erica Jane. And so Lisa Renner wondering where oh where has Kathy gone? Oh, I found her, y'all. I found Kathy. Kathy down, down to the Florida. At the Hilton residence, partying up with the Trumps, okay? With the Trumps. Now, you can vote for whoever you want to vote for. You can you can support whoever you want to support. I ain't got I ain't got nothing to say about it, but I just mm, I don't know. See, now it got me looking at Kathy a little sideways right now. And I just not not to get political on y'all, but it just got me looking at her a little sideways. I just can't help myself, okay. I just can't help myself. Got to wonder about, no. and I, and the fact that Lisa Renner posted it. Oh, that's where she was. <laughs> that is some shade. And let me tell y'all something. This is what I say. Lisa Renner told Garcelle. She said, "Listen, the first season you gonna it's gonna be fun and you are gonna have a cute old good time. But second season, watch out, baby." And she meant what she had said, okay? She meant what she had said. And they, she has taken no prisoners, allegedly, okay? No prisoners at all. Now, there are other reports, okay, that Kathy Hilton would only return to the show, okay, if her... Uh, uh, this is a report by Radar Online as well, that Kathy Hilton would only report to back to Beverly Hills for the next coming season, if okay, if Kim Richards return, a phone call. 
Andy Cohen called me uh, a couple last week. So maybe that could be one of our discussions. He said, you know, a lot of people have been asking for me to come back. And he said, he thought, I'll go right to the source. So he did. And um, I do love Andy a lot. He's great. And it was time for him to put his baby to bed. So we cut the phone call short. But we definitely had it. So uh, let's see here. Mm -hmm. I did have a, um, a phone call, Andy. Now, I've been telling y'all for years. Well, at least as long as I've been on this platform. Kim Richards, when Kim Richards was on Beverly Hills, the show was Dino Might. Okay, Dino Might. However, a lot of people feel like it's not a good environment for Kim because of, you know, it may have issues for her sobriety. Okay. And I do feel like that could be true. Because, listen, we don't want her to be on TV and be a train wreck, per se. We want her to be on TV and be able to be healthy, but still bring the right amount of quirkiness that makes the shows great. You know what I'm saying? But if she's, you know, but the, again, only if it's in her best interest financially and it's not going to do any more damage to her and her sobriety okay so i mean we just gotta kind of wait and see you know what i'm saying we gotta kind of wait and see whether or not she's actually gonna get back on the show or not but she did say that andy andy had called her so i guess we'll just have to wait and see y'all beverly hills y'all beverly hills <laughs> all right y'all so we got to get into Candace Dillard Bassett. The rumors, y'all, the rumors are that they didn't specifically state Candace in this post, but everybody is assuming that it is Candace that they're talking about. So let's go ahead and read the post that we have right here. And this is coming from our friends over at All About the Real Housewives. And it was spilt to bravoandcocktails.com. So this is what it says. This problematic East Coast housewife who has been on the show for a few seasons now is rumored to not be getting her contract renewed with the new season. Now, the first thing that I want to stop and point to you guys is this. They say in the post that she's been on the show for a few seasons now, okay? So I know that some people were talk were thinking that they were talking about Ramona. And for me, I had to look at that, look, that one line right there, and that tells me, no, we're not talking about Ramona because Ramona been there since day one, okay? And if there's anybody who's problematic that should probably be, be shown the door, it's definitely Ramona. But I could definitely, I could go down a rabbit hole about that, and we're going to do that on a later date, okay? Now, reading along, it says, with filming slated to begin within the next month or so, I had heard that preliminary filming had already started, but I had also heard that it wasn't set to officially begin in until March, which would make sense. But the streets, you know, it's here and there. It's touch and go sometimes with when filming actually starts because everybody may not start at the same time. Now. It says the producers have finally realized that the trouble she has caused and has gotten herself into has not been a good look for the overall franchise. Along with the added pressure from many opinionated fans calling for her termination, the clear as day fact that she will never own up to her share of mistakes and the high probability that she will continue to cause and get into more unnecessary trouble. It is said that producers and the network are already looking for her replacement and are already toying with some ideas, including testing the waters of some new women recommended by the current 
slash already returning cast and the promotion of the friend of from last season. Watch out. Okay. So that last line also kind of gets me because it also makes me feel like they are referring to Escala, who many people fell completely in love with her sense of fashion and her sort of sarcastic, I mean, understated shade, but sort of actual real sensibility that she provided to the cast. She felt like a solid addition to the cast. Okay. She really did. Ascala felt like a solid addition to the cast. Okay. So now, after this has been, and this has made the rounds, and I want to shout out who sent me this? It was Jasmine who sent me this. Thank you so much, Jasmine, who's for sending me this. All right. So there's that. And I told Jasmine, I said, listen. I'm going to wait to talk about this because I know some people are going to be like, oh, you just want Candace fire. You don't like Candace. It ain't that. It's not even that because I I'm, and my take on this going is it might surprise you. So stick around. All right. All right. So Candace on social media, I think some people thought and I want to shout out Urban Bell Mac for pointing her tweets out that. Some of these tweets could have been in reference to her not returning because she said, like I said, count on yourself and Jesus. That's it. And that's all around 23 hours ago. And then it says, I'm ready to check out. That was like 19 hours ago. But then the next post that we get from her that could kind of be alluding to what's being talked about right now is she says, wow, I was trending. You all really want me to be that girl, don't you? With the kind of drunk. Um, face with the Potomac uh, flower emoji that they typically use to indicate the Real Housewives of Potomac. Now, um, here's the thing. Candace, in and of herself, is technically on paper, an ideal housewife. Let me tell you why. On paper, she's she has a she has a husband. She's in an interracial rela- relationship, which adds an extra dynamic. You know, Chris already has kids, and she does not, which also gives her an extra amount of interest. I'm talking about from a production standpoint, and follow me when I'm telling y'all this, right? And Candace has a very interesting dynamic with her mother as well. And then there is the relationship between her mother and her husband. Not to mention, we have not explored the relationship that Candace has with her in-laws. So there is plenty of material to work with when it comes to Candace from a story perspective, okay? Additionally, she does provide, when she's not in the drama, very funny critiques for her narrative explanations of what's happening in her confessionals, right? So she can sit in her confessionals and sort of narrate what's happening with the rest of the girls in a in a way that is comical. Now, um, here's the thing. And someone, Didi says, ideal, but she has no luxury lifestyle. And a lot of the women on a, some of these shows don't necessarily live in the lap of luxury. However, they still make, they're still on the show. We can think of plenty of examples of people who that fits for. Now, um, the problem with Candace is that, you know, she tends to find herself in hot water a lot. Do I think that the network enjoys that? No. Do I think that Andy enjoys dealing with her? No, I don't. You know, he talks about there being housewives that he doesn't really like. I think she is probably one of them. And I think she might even be aware of it. Um, I don't ever want to see someone get fired per se, but 
I understand that the network has to do what they have to do. My hope would have been that she came back this season and had dialed it back a little bit in terms of how she interacts with the ladies on, on, on some level. And some of the things that she does and she puts out there, that was my hope as she if she came back this season because I do sense that because she is young, she has some room to grow, okay? She does. She has room to grow. And I was, I was for me, I was willing to, in, in my mind as a viewer, right, give her that grace to grow. So I don't know, man. It's, it's, it's going to be an interesting thing because Candace brought a lot of drama to the show. Whether you like her or not, she definitely brings the drama it may go a, a little bit further than most people may like for it to go, but she definitely brought it. So it will be interesting to see if she is sort of replaced by a Scala who would be moving into a full-time role if that is if the report is true. Would you guys prefer them to replace her with a Scala or would you just prefer them both to be on the show? And they can both exist on the show, absolutely. But we're basing this on the report that's come out. All right. Let me know down in that good chatterization down below. Okay. Down below. Now, I see a lot of people talking about Robin, you know, and letting people want Robin to be gone. Can I tell y'all the truth? If I'm a producer and Robin doesn't cost me a lot of money, I might I might would keep her. But I would make her work. The only problem with Robin is I feel like fans are losing faith in her story. And I'm only speaking as as if I were producing. Fans are losing faith in Robin's story. And I think once that happens, it's very hard to bounce back from that. Where is the wedding? Okay. Where is the wedding? Whenever she's asked about it, there's still no talk of the wedding, which leads us to believe or it, it makes me feel like there's something not right with that situation. That's how it feels, right? That's how it feels. And, and see, Bruce, you hit the nail on the head. I prefer all of them over Robin. She can definitely be replaced. Why is she still there with no story? She could be a friend, or uh, but not full time. I mean, it almost feels like she could be a friend. She'd be a darn good friend. You know what I'm saying? Come in, back up her girlfriend, her, uh, uh you know, her, uh, uh, Giselle. Come in and back Giselle up, and and and, and there you go, and there you have it. You know, and still sell a hat and still sell some hats. Tish P, where's the wedding? Where are the hats? I don't know where the hats at. Where the hats? Oh, girl, she wear the hats. Um, but that's just me. Okay. That's just me. There you go. All right. There you go. Um, so. Finally, do I, you know, what do I think about this? I don't know. You know, I feel like this is something I would have to see to believe. And I never wish for nobody, you know, I've never, I'm this in the space that I am in today. I never want to wish anyone to be fired, especially, you know, any of our people. It, it is what it is. I can't wish that on nobody. Um, Yolanda C says Robin hasn't had a storyline since season one. She needs to go and keep a Scala and Candace. I understand it. I understand it. I understand. Y'all, can we talk about ladies who list? Can we talk about ladies who list Atlanta? Okay. Ladies who list Atlanta. Did you see ladies who list Atlanta? Okay. Because we got to talk about a different Robin right now. 
And this is a Robin who's working, okay? Who 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 is doing the work? Robin is working this show. Let me tell you that. Now, we didn't get a chance to talk about it because I honestly just got a chance to watch it this morning, okay? And we're just going to do a quick little review of it, you know, to catch us all up on what's going on, what's going down to it. If you did catch Ladies Who List Atlanta, I want you to drop your rating for it down in that good chatterization. Drop the rating for your for this week's episode of the, of the Ladies Who List Atlanta. Episode 6 It's called Giddy Up. Giddy Up. All right. Giddy Up. D. Bright Lacey says, I want to hear your thoughts before I watch it. Well, all right then. Here we go, D. Bright Lacey. I appreciate you. Okay. Um, I'm going to give this episode an eight. I give it an eight because they still left me with a cliffhanger. Okay. As if I was not going to watch it next week if I didn't, if I won't dangling by this cliff that they done left me on. And sometimes I be feeling like I don't want shows to continue to always rely on the cliffhanger because sometimes just let me see the whole thing. Okay. Let me see the whole thing. All right. So. We pick up from last week at the party, okay? Crystal and Robin decide to finally go have a Ponderosa. So they go sit down and they chat about why they ain't spoke to one another, okay? In about four weeks. Robin ain't call her. Crystal ain't call her. And they're both still in their feelings about the argument that they had a couple of episodes ago. All right. Now, Kiana waltzes her butt over there and she says, oh, no, 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 no. Not at my event. OK, not on my watch. You guys can start this conversation here, but you will end it outside. I'm about to make my speech. So y'all got to go. OK, so she sends them on their way. They go outside or whatever. And Kiana gives her speech for her one year anniversary for her. Uh, for her brokerage, she thanks her husband because he, you know, she felt like she would not have made it, you know, in in the like she felt like she put so much time into her business that her husband, you know, helped her a lot, you know, during through their marriage by being a good partner and getting them billboards for her. Okay. Now, Kiana, not Kiana, but uh, Robin and Crystal, they go outside, they have a conversation. And let me tell you the gist of the conversation. Okay. Before I actually, it was what's, what's the point? They don't really get anywhere. Okay. They don't really get nowhere in this conversation. You know, Robin feels like Crystal didn't have her back. Crystal feels like she's trying to explain to Robin why her feelings were hurt. And that she that and she should not have smacked her hand like that. And then they get out, to, they they sitting in the courtyard, and there's some roaches or something running around. And I'm like, now wait a minute, are they all at the Waldorf Astoria? Is that what they were or the W? Whatever the case may be, why is there a roach there? I don't know. They end up laughing about the roach, and then they just forgive each other. It was very reminiscent of a Kim and Nene type of situation. They might be, no, I ain't getting my hat. <laughs> they they remind me of a Kim and Nene or a Giselle and, and Karen type of situation. And honestly, if that's the route we going with this show, I'm here for it. Because you need that type of dynamic on these type of shows. The, the, the break up to make up and break up to make up all over again. Okay. And what better way to make up than over some roaches? You know, they decided to try it again. All right. Robin then goes and she visits her clients that we saw her sell the house to the first episode. The clients are so happy that they learned so much from Robin. And then 
Tiana takes her client, Qu Quinetta, okay? Oh, hey, boo. Hey, Liz, thank you for the super chat. DJ Richie has been such a long time since I caught a live. So happy to be back with the Sky Squad. Welcome back, boo. Love from Alexandria, Louisiana. Thank you, boo. All right. Y'all was right when y'all said it. Quinetta, who is Tiana's client, is actually not just a designer, but she's also an architect. Okay. So. They go and Tiana takes her to this country like ranch style home and the, the couple decides to spend a, um, to, to submit an offer on this. And I'm like, I like I like to see it because we are seeing the real estate. We are seeing people put in offers. We are seeing these things. And I'm and I'm liking that. I'm really, really liking that. All right. Now, Kira is back with her 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 boot B. Simone. And they're looking at a townhome in the in a in a great Atlanta neighborhood. It's beautiful to me. I wrote it was beautiful, but I would have imagined that I don't know why I would have just pictured B. Simone living in like some type of big luxury high rise or a single family home, like that was maybe kind of in a, like a gated community or something like that. Because I'm assuming that B. Simone is like rolling in the dough. I mean, like rolling like literally wallowing in dollar signs when she wake up in the morning okay that's what i think that's what i thought so it was interesting to me that she would want to be in a townhouse community because you have you're surrounded by people that you may not know so just in terms of i'm thinking about security and stuff like that i'm shocked that she would want to to do that right i love a good townhouse situation trust and believe i do but in my mind, I would have just thought, based on who she is, that she might have wanted a little bit more seclusion, right? Oh, okay. Now, Flower Turquoise says that was a $2 million townhouse. Now, now, oh, okay. I'm going to tell you something. That rooftop was hidden, okay? I would have bought it for that rooftop alone, all right? Um, and I thought Kira looked amazing in this scene for some reason. I was just like, yes, Kira had done. I mean, I don't know what it was. I mean, she had put a little extra sauce on it that day. Okay. A, a little bit of extra sauce on it. All right. Oh, okay. California Cutie says, Rich, you have to go watch the interview with Robin on the lady, Ooh Lady's first panel with Bondi. Y'all know I love me some Bondi. Okay. Um, so I'm going to check that out too. All right. So Tiffany and Tiana have a play date. We learned that their birthdays are around the same time. Actually, their birthdays are around the same, around the same time as Kiana and Robin's as well. So all the Libras going to go out for their birthday, but they're not going to invite Crystal or Kira. All right. Because they ain't Libras. Now. Um, Robin and Crystal meet for drinks and Crystal brings up Crystal comes to the dinner and brings her an early birthday bouquet of flowers. Robin has a very interesting analogy for Crystal. She says. Crystal is like your favorite sweater, but sometimes your favorite sweater itches. And I said, you know what, Robin? That's it. I know y'all got one friend out there that you probably love to death. But they probably just irk your nerve. It's something about the way they, and maybe it could be a, the space that you in in your life where you just you look at your friend a little bit differently. You be like, I don't even like the way you talking right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's not even the type of energy I'm on. Like, it ain't the same. Okay, and that's that. That's that sweater that itches that you love. I got a sweater, and I got three, four, five sweaters in my closet right now. They made a wool. I'm allergic to wool, okay? So I already know when I put these sweaters on, 
My nose going to be stopped up. I'm going to start to sneezing, but I still want to wear the sweater because it looked good, okay? It made so much sense. It made so much sense. <laughs> Sometimes you just can't give it up, okay? Anyway, um, Crystal feels like she loves hanging out with Robin because she feels like she's a very structured person and Robin takes her out of that element. She does tell Robin about this, this man who is in this, who wants this polyamorous relationship with her and she wants Robin to go to the poly party. I cannot wait to talk to Crystal because I cannot wait to ask her, did you go to the poly party? Did anybody go with you to the poly party? And what happened at the poly party? What did you see? What did you do? Okay. Because I ain't never been. So I want to know what goes down. Is it like a swingers type of situation? Do people creep off to the back room and do things? Let us know. Let us know. Okay. Um, Robin don't think that this is going to be a good look for Crystal. Okay. Crystal says she's just having fun. But Robin is like, who is the real Crystal? Because I don't know this girl. But Robin really wants to know what the issue is with Tiffany and Robin and uh, Crystal. Crystal's like, who? Who is that? Is she on the cast with us? Tiffany. Who is Tiffany? I think I know that name, child. Who is Tiffany? Tiffany. Oh, she was at the meeting. Yeah, Tiffany. I was like, girl. <laughs> and then Crystal's like, well, I don't know her at all. And I think it's easy for Tiffany to say how she would have handled the situation with me and you that night when we got into it after it's already happened. Robin is like, well, girl, she was able to relate to me and we have gone through some similar things. And Crystal's like, I don't know. Tiffany has never been friendly to me, but she seems to be overly friendly to someone who she can get something from. Now, Crystal, and see, this is the things I got to ask Crystal, because I like Crystal. I do. But Crystal, if you say you don't know her, how do you know that she's overly friendly to people who she can get something from? And then... Would that not also apply to you who was overly friendly to Kira by bringing her the seafood and scrimp dinner to try to get her business? Crystal, you got some explaining to do, okay? Um, Crystal in her confessional then says, she realizes that there is something between her and Tiffany, who she now knows, okay? Who she now knows. Robin suggests that they meet up to talk. Crystal feels like, I'll talk to Tiffany, but I don't know if she'll be honest. I don't know, okay? Now, Crystal, I can tell you from my limited amount of time in speaking with uh, Tiffany, and we can refer back to that interview from about two weeks ago, Tiffany seems relatively straightforward, relatively genuine, relatively earnest, and relatively what you see is what you get. So maybe you need to look at her through a different lens, okay? Robin then starts on this thing about busy moms. She's like, yeah, girl, because busy moms, we don't got time to worry about who is not messing with who, okay? And then in her confessional, she says this. Robin drops a bomb on us. She says, Crystal may actually have some secret envy for Tiffany because Tiffany has everything that Crystal wants. I 
I mean, it, I don't, you know, I don't know. Okay. I don't even know. Um, Robin then tells Crystal that she and Tiffany should meet and Crystal is open to it and hopes that Tiffany will be honest. Robin tells her now Robin tells her to talk to her at Kiana's birthday party. So I'm assuming maybe Kiana's having something coming up. And then Crystal makes her promise. If she talks to Tiffany, then you got to come with me to the poly party. is going on at the poly party i don't know anyway it's the day of tiana's horseback riding event okay and everybody seems like they're getting along and having a good old time and then robin lets the ladies know that she talked with crystal and that they are they're going to be all right okay they're going to be good we're going to be all right okay and um, she's like, you know, Tiffany, is anything cooking with you and, and, and Crystal? What's, what's up with y'all, you know? And Tiffany's like, I mean, we're good. We don't really know each other, but we're good. And then Robin is like, well, okay then. So just send her a DM on the, on, in the, on the Instagram and, you know, invite her to lunch or something like that so you could tell her y'all good. And Tiffany's like, I'm not going to do that, okay? Probably not. And then Robin is like, yeah, girl, I know. It's You know what? We are busy moms. We are busy moms, and we have things to do with our kids. We have things to do with our kids. And we don't have time to be concerned about this petty drama, okay? I'm emphasizing this kids thing because it's going to be important in a second. And Tiffany's like, you know, I don't need any new friends. You know, I got a family. I got jobs. And, you know, I'm just dealing, I'm just spending time with my kids and handling stuff like that. And Robin is like, yes, girl, the kids, the kids, the kids, the kids, okay? The kids. <laughs> but people who don't have kids don't understand. OK. So Kiana turns around, whips her hair around and is like. I don't have kids and you talk, are you talking to me? I am people without kids. So when you're talking about people without kids, you are talking. About me, OK. Now. I got to be real with y'all on two counts here, OK. Count one. Robin was really not specifically talking to Kiana. Okay? She wasn't. And really, the conversation was between Robin and Tiffany. So... In my mind, to quote the great Malaysia Pargo, if it don't apply, let it fly. Okay? Because you don't have to involve yourself in every argument that you are near or invited to. Okay? And to be honest with you, I have to tell you, I don't have kids. I got a dog. That's it. OK, I don't have kids. So when Robin is saying people without kids don't understand, you are correct. I do not. OK, I don't. Tell me about it, though. OK, tell me your struggles. Tell me your plights. But I don't understand. And I probably can't understand because I don't have any kids. I don't understand the level of sacrifice that has to be made, you know, when you are you have to juggle responsibilities you know with your kids i don't understand it do i think that she meant it as an insult no i don't think that 
What I do think is that because I don't think that Robin or any of the other ladies have an idea or a clue what Kiana is going through. And I think that unbeknownst to Robin, this is a subject that Kiana is extra sensitive about because of what she is going through. Now, maybe had that been discussed, the comment never would have been said. I don't know. I don't know that Kiana has ever expressed this to this group of women. We only got this information, what, last episode? But it does make sense why Kiana would feel kind of incensed by this, even though, truth be told, Robin was not talking to her. It did not apply to her. So it's like you shouldn't even put the shoe on, okay? Don't put this shoe on. It is not for you. However, they're in a group setting. The cameras are on all of them. I am sure it was because of what Kiana is going through that made her extra sensitive about this situation. Boom. Somebody said uh, Kiana was coming from a sensitive place. Yep. Pretty much. I mean, you could look at this two ways, right? You could look at this two ways. Some people might be offended by it. I would not be offended by it. If, if Robin said to me or to the rest of the group, well, you don't have kids, so you don't understand. Actually, you're right. I don't have kids, so I don't understand. Now what? There you go. All right. Um, I wrote in my notes, Kiana is a bit triggered. Thank God Crystal wasn't there. And she equates what Robin is saying about not being a mother to the value of her, who, who you are as a woman. Like there's less value as a woman if you don't have a kid. And I don't think that that was the way Rob, Robin was going with that. Robin is kind of perplexed because she's like, it's the truth. And I won't talk into you. Tiana tries to intervene, but that does not go well. Okay. Triggered. Okay. It was a good episode overall. It was a good episode overall. I'm interested to see next week because we were warned by Tiana that she kind of gets into it with somebody and now we know that Tiana is going to get into it with Kiana because as Robin did, Tiana is going to make the same mistake of calling Kiana Kiana, which Kiana, I mean, Kiana does not like, okay? Does not like at all. So that was ladies list. It was good. I'm interested. I'm interested to see what happens next week, and I'm interested to see what will happen at the reunion and what's going to happen in season two, because I'm definitely sure we're going to get a season two. So I'm really interested in that. Listen, thank you guys for tuning in to this little fireside chat. We appreciate you. We definitely do. And I appreciate your, <laughs> I appreciate your commentary as well. Now, um... Y'all make sure y'all stay safe out there. Comment what your comments are down below if you missed the live. Um, weekly podcast will start to happen again on the DJ Richie Sky Unfiltered channel as well. So make sure you guys are subscribed to that. Also subscribe to Richie Sky in real life. This more of the vlog channel behind the scenes. I got plenty more coming on that channel as well. It's about to be busy in 2022. So with that being said... I love y'all and I'm going to catch y'all in the next video.